So last week, an uh, interesting story popped up. It's about woke Raytheon. So there's a guy by the name of Christopher F. Rufo. He uh, is a senior fellow at the Manhattan Institute. Now, I'll let you guys know up front. Listen, this guy, I mean, he's a right-wing guy. Um, I really do question not only his motives, but others' motives in jumping on this story. Like, I think they're actively searching out for woke stuff to get mad at. So I don't know how much of this is hyperbolic and exaggerated and how much of this is real. But, you know, nonetheless, I want to tell you a little bit about what this guy found and then the reaction. So this guy, Christopher F. Rufo, tweeted the following. Scoop. Raytheon, the nation's second largest defense contractor, has launched a critical race theory program that encourages white employees to confront their privilege, reject the principle of equality, and, I quote, defund the police. Let's review the internal documents. And so he, he posts a bunch of the internal documents. He says, last summer, Raytheon CEO Greg Hayes launched the Stronger Together campaign. Funny, that was the Hillary Clinton uh, mantra or slogan. Instructing employees on becoming an anti-racist today. He signed a corporate diversity statement and then asked all Raytheon employees to sign the pledge and check their own biases. The program is centered on intersectionality, a core component of critical race theory that divides the world into competing identity groups with race, gender, religion, sexual orientation, and other categories defining an individual's place within the hierarchy of oppression. He continues... Raytheon then asks white employees to deconstruct their identities and identify their privilege. The company argues that white, straight, Christian men are at the top of the oppression hierarchy and must work on recognizing their privilege and step aside for minorities. Raytheon instructs white employees to say they pray things change soon. Whites must acknowledge that their own discomfort is a fraction of their black colleagues who are exhausted, mentally drained, frustrated, stressed, barely sleeping, scared, and overwhelmed. He continues, Raytheon has segregated employees by race and identity groups for black, Hispanic, Asian, Native American, LGBTQ, and other intersectional categories. Um, I'll give you a little bit more here, but it goes on. Next, Raytheon explicitly instructs employees to oppose equality, defined as treating each person the same regardless of their differences, and strives instead for equity which focuses on the equality of the outcome. Um, finally, in a collection of recommended resources, the company encourages white employees to defund the police, participate in reparations, and decolonize your bookshelf, and join a local white space. Okay, so that's the gist of it. Um, I'm sure, you know, he shows some documents here, so some of it, I'm sure, is real. I don't know which parts are hyperbolic or being ex exaggerated. I also don't know to what extent this stuff is actually being enforced. Um, it could vary, I mean, because I'm sure you guys have worked a thousand different jobs. I've worked a thousand different jobs. It's very possible that this is one of those things where, like, they hand out a pamphlet and never say anything to you about any of it. You know what I mean? Like, okay, we're trying to cover our ass, so here's some shit that Robin D'Angelo wrote, and now we're done with it. You know what I mean? So, I don't know how much they're trying to make, you know, trying to scare people with this to gin up the narrative because of course the right does this all the time they take something and they say let's make this the narrative and they do successfully oftentimes do that you know like at the same time that biden was sending out checks to people with the stimulus package uh republicans were talking about like mr potato head now being called potato head or some shit or dr seuss and so they changed the conversation to the culture war stuff to you know try to downplay or, or push aside some decent economic stuff that their opponents are doing. So I just want to get that out there on the record. Now, having said that, the reaction to this is fascinating. So a little bit before this, in regards to another goofy story involving race, Laura Ingram was like, we should, you know, basically defund the military. Defund the military industrial complex or whatever she said. Then the reaction to this was very similar. You had a lot of right wingers basically saying defund Raytheon. You know, like, no more tax money for Raytheon, or whatever. Things to that effect were being argued. And, um, so, what's my reaction to all this? My reaction is very simple. I find it hilarious that, well, actually, I don't know if hilarious is the right word, because it's also just massively depressing, but it takes something like this to make the right turn on Raytheon and the military-industrial complex. So... When all of these so-called defense contractors were doing war profiteering, 
and were creating the weapons of war that were used to kill hundreds of thousands of innocent civilians. That didn't bother you? That didn't bother you. The fact that we arm and fund Saudi Arabia, who's committing a genocide in Yemen. The fact that we arm and fund Israel, who's doing endless illegal occupation, wantonly violating international law. That never bothered you. The fact that we arm and prop up a lot of vicious governments and dictators. That doesn't bother you. That doesn't bother you. So when they're involved in all of these grotesque crimes around the world, that never bothered you. But the thing that you take issue with is Raytheon is being a little too woke now, so we need to defund them. Listen. What's the old saying? You never look a gift horse in the mouth? I don't even know what that means, but it sounds appropriate to bring up right now. Because, you know what? I'll take it. As long as you end up in the correct spot, which is, let's not keep shoveling money into Raytheon, or Boeing, or Lockheed Martin, or whatever. As long as you say, hey, let's, uh, let's reduce the amount of tax money that they're getting because this is unacceptable. Fine. You got there in a goofy-ass way. You didn't show your work, or if you did show your work, you used the wrong formula to get to the correct conclusion. But you know what? If you're at the correct conclusion, I'll take it. It's just hilarious that their issue is Raytheon is too woke, as opposed to Raytheon helps uh, do war crimes. Helps arm authoritarian governments or theocratic governments. Helps add to the intense misery and suffering that people experience around the world. So, you did not come to the right answer with the correct formula, but you're at the right answer, so you know what? I'm, I'm going to take it. I'm just going to take it. But I do think it shows, in, in many ways, how unserious the right is when it comes to, you know, their moral compass is broken. That's the best way I can explain it. Their outrage meter is broken. They're not really looking at things when it comes to morality and ethics and... And they're not looking at things in an objective, intelligent way. They're really being led by their feelings and the things that trigger them. And in a way, this is them wanting to act on a real-world problem because they're triggered. Wanting to act on a real-world problem because they're emotional about the culture war. So, it's ridiculous, it's silly, it's pathetic, but whatever. As long as you end up at the right place, I'll take it. Um... But really, the war crimes should have been the thing that made you want to defund Raytheon and defund the military. And by the way, just to be clear, when I say defund Raytheon or defund the military, I'm talking about let's cut the budget massively and take that money and put it into infrastructure, put it into healthcare, put it into education. Because we should. We spend more than the next 10 or 12 biggest nations combined, and most of them are our allies when it comes to the military. So we need to cut that no matter what. Um, but let's be clear, I also don't think this is going to lead to like a lasting coalition people on the right and people on the left being anti-war, a lot of the people who are so-called anti-war on the right, they don't really follow through with that much. Some of the libertarian types do from time to time, but a lot of times it's just they're anti-war in, in sophistry only. They're anti-war in rhetoric only. It's not when it comes down to voting. You know, it's the same thing with a lot of the fake populists. When it comes time to actually vote, they're nowhere to be found. Like, um, Holly being against the $15 minimum wage. So, but at least some of the, you know, right-wing clowns online are like, well, now I'm against the military and uh, against imperialism. Well, it's sad that it took this, but at least if you're in the right spot, it is what it is, and I'll accept it. I just hope that maybe you take a second look at some more serious reasons why one would maybe want to massively cut military spending.